Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblers Advisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I made a premium video a few weeks ago, and I pointed out that it was my belief that Devin Haney was going to win this fight. Right? Look at the trends, folks. He fights a southpaw in Lomachenko. He follows that up by fighting a southpaw in Regis Progre. Now he's following it up by fighting a guy who, granted, is out of an orthodox stance, but his big punch is his left hook. Right? I'm guessing Haney, should he win this fight, is then going to look at Matthias, who also, like Garcia, relies perhaps a bit too much on that left hook. Right? But let me just say, if you have waited to bet on this fight, folks, there isn't a lot of value. In fact, there's no value in the Devin Haney side of the ledger because he's going off at a minus 1,000. In other words, to win one dollar, I'd have to bet ten. Right? Understand too, it makes no sense because the opponent, Ryan Garcia, now is undervalued by the public. When I talked about Haney earlier, you know, it was with an understanding that Ryan Garcia was a decorated amateur, right? The judges awarded him the win over Virgil Ortiz, who I still think is one of the better fighters in boxing. Uh, understand too, Ryan Garcia has a greater than 80% KO ratio. Ryan Garcia has stopped credible people like Oscar Duarte. Right? Ryan Garcia is hand speed mixed with power. He's been a little bit too reliant on that left hook of late, but understand, there are films of Ryan Garcia knocking guys out with uppercuts where the opponent can't even get a hand up. Garcia's that fast. So when you mix a dangerous opponent with, you know, a minus 1,000 odds, the minus 1,000 odd part of the play is not worth it. Now let's double back here and let's be vultures. There's a prop here that given recent results seems to be completely mispriced. Right now, just understand, Garcia is the puncher in the fight. Right? I don't have a doubt about that. But Haney is the disciplined boxer who can go 12 rounds against a puncher, Regis Progre and score the one knockdown in the fight and really not lose any rounds, right? Maybe Progre won one round or something like that, but let's say that fight was over by the time he got to round eight, right? Haney is the master technician here. But these odds have gotten ridiculous. I know there are concerns about Ryan Garcia's mental health I need for people to understand that mental health is a delicate issue that affects far more people than any of us want to acknowledge. Right? One of my favorite presidents in history, he's on a short list, quite frankly. He literally is on Mount Rushmore. Abe Lincoln had mental health concerns. Look it up. He suffered from what they called in the 19th century melancholia, right? If you know game theory, John Nash, one of the great minds of our time, had mental health concerns, right? You'd be hard pressed to find a better academic, right? I saw the movie Oppenheimer, understand, Oppenheimer dies in his early 60s. Why? Because he was a chimney. This was a guy who was nervous all the time to the point where he could not stop smoking. We would recognize him today as a compulsive smoker. My point to you is the idea of normal may be the outlier. Right? Sure. 
Ryan Garcia is enthusiastic. He's a bullion, right? Sure, he, you know, at times might seem too enthusiastic. Folks, he's lost once. That was to Gervonta Davis, championship level fighter, right? One loss. What is he doing? And I mean this right now at a greater than six to one. Folks, the line's gotten ridiculous here. Bet one dollar, win six dollars and seven cents on Ryan Garcia. Well, let's talk about recent developments. And let's talk about the complete casino mispricing, right? I just placed some money on this prop. Understand, Devin Haney himself has had weight issues, right? Devin Haney was in the UK hanging out with Anthony Joshua. People saw him and they thought he looked like he weighed in the 160s. This fight's at 140. When you see a guy whether it's Roberto Duran, who got knocked out by Thomas the Hitman Hearns, right? Whether it's Ricky Hatton, who got knocked out by Manny Pacquiao. When you see a guy who is several weight classes above his fighting weight between fights, right? Just understand that guy's punch resistance might be at issue. You notice Lawrence Acoli had no punch resistance against Chris Billum Smith. Now suddenly, Okole has left the cruiserweight division. He's gonna be fighting at Bridgerweight. Right, just food for thought. You see a guy and he's getting hit with shots and then the guy's on the canvas, the guy's holding, the guy looks dazed and confused. The next round, it's the same. You need to figure out the guy's weight before the fight. Now here, these two guys know each other. These two guys were star amateurs going back years. Right, Devin Haney, who knows Ryan Garcia, sees Ryan Garcia recently and says, hey, he looks heavy. There's concern about whether Ryan Garcia is even going to make the weight limit. Right, folks, in situations like that, where a guy you know, has to lose a lot of weight at the last minute. You need to question the punch resistance. Let's talk about another open issue with regard to Ryan Garcia. I mentioned that he lost to Gervonta Davis. Folks, that didn't go the distance. That's a stoppage loss. Revisit the film. <clears throat> Gervonta Davis hits him in the ribs. There's a delayed reaction. Then Ryan Garcia goes down. Now I gotta tell you, if fighters study films, if a guy like a Terrence Crawford saw that film, right? A Teofimo Lopez saw that film. A Ramirez saw that film. One of the questions in their heads in a fight against Ryan Garcia is, hey, how well is Ryan gonna take my body shots? Do I even have to hit this guy in the head to knock him out? We just saw a heavyweight fight, Kabayel against Mahmoudov, where Mahmoudov looked big and tough, looked like he was straight out of a Rocky movie. You would have thought he was Ivan Drago. Then, of course, Kabayel starts hitting him in the body. I believe even Kabayel was surprised. Kabayel starts hitting him in the body, and he folds up like a lawn chair. Right, suddenly you're looking at this, you know, muscular looking dude and you realize M Mr. Muscle here can't take body shots. Are you certain, given what happened in the Gervonta Davis fight, that Ryan Garcia can take body shots? I think Devin Haney's going to try to find out. Right, understand too, when you're dealing with punchers, a puncher only has to be right once. I saw Mike Tyson getting tested years ago by Francois Botha. You were watching that fight. It actually carried a few rounds. And you thought, wow, you know, who's going to win this fight? You know, you started thinking, wow, are the judges going to do the right thing and give Botha the rounds that he's earned? Well, of course, all those questions went out the window because Tyson leaned down, landed one good shot, 
and that was the fight. We've all seen fights like that. Understand, as highly skilled as Devin Haney is, right? All it takes is one good shot from Ryan Garcia, and that could end the fight. You know, I was watching that Ryan Garcia Oscar Duarte fight. Folks, Garcia was in trouble. Now I know knockouts cause amnesia, right? Ryan Garcia, of course, turns around, gets the stoppage. We've forgotten about that fight. Revisit that fight. Garcia's in trouble, and there's several more rounds to go. So my point is simply this. You have it all here. You have two guys who apparently have gained weight when they're not fighting. Right? Devin Haney, keep in mind, he's relatively new to 140. He's only fought Regis Progre at 140. And already when he's hanging out with AJ, he's up around 165. Right, folks? That, you know, I don't know what to say. You treat your body badly, your body sooner or later will start treating you badly. Right? Ryan Garcia, you know, here you have Devin Haney who knows him, sees him. It's like that college reunion where you see guys and you're like, whoa, dude, you know, have you been eating good food or something? You know, is life this good? Right? You see old friends and they have extra weight. Folks, Ryan Garcia is going to have to lose that weight. The prop that's mispriced is whether this fight goes the distance. Right, folks, believe it or not, they are giving you better than even money. Right, that's an over under <laughs> of 12 full rounds. Right, if you're in the 12th and both guys are drained, they're breathing out of their mouths, uh, you know, they're struggling, you still have a chance to win this bet. And they're giving it to you at better than even money. Let me say this too. You know, you don't even have to be the guy on your front foot to get the stoppage. Think Ali Foreman, right? If the other guy is hyper-aggressive, and wasn't that Ryan Garcia against Gervonta Davis? If Ryan Garcia decides he's going to make a statement, he wants the stoppage, and he's on his front foot chasing Devin Haney, Folks, you chase a world-caliber fighter too aggressively, you end up being reckless. You leave yourself open for shots. Understand, with this over-under at a plus 119, better than even money, I don't even need to know who gets the knockout. I just need to feel that a knockout's going to happen. And that's in a fight where Ryan Garcia has a greater than 80% KO ratio for his career. So, I think Devin Haney is going to win the fight. I think the weight thing gives me pause, right? I believe you're getting these odds because, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know why you're getting these odds. If the public thinks... Ryan Garcia is too crazy to fight. How could they expect him to go 12 rounds? Somebody explained that to me in the comment section of this YouTube video. Let's remember too, Haney knocks down Regis Progre. Let's think this through too. I know Haney's good defensively, but wow, didn't Lomachenko land a few good straight left hands against him when they fought? Right, folks, if bigger guy, he's 140, not 135. And according to Haney, he's even bigger than that. If a bigger guy, much bigger puncher, Ryan Garcia lands punches like that, it's not going to go the distance. Right, so I expect Haney to win. I don't expect this to be a polite fight. I think both guys are going to throw shots. I think the guys have history. You're in a venue, New York City, where they're going to boo you. If you come out there and you look like Riyad Murphy did against uh, Big Baby, they're going to boo you. 
right? I don't think either of these guys wants to be booed. I think both guys consider this to be a statement fight, right? So, I'm not expecting the very politeness that we saw in Progre against Devin Haney, or even the politeness that we saw in Jorge Linares against Devin Haney, right? I'm expecting action. I'm expecting combustibility. I'm expecting recklessness, right? I was not expecting a plus 119 that the fight goes the distance. I've just grabbed that prop, right? I've just grabbed that prop because when their weight concerns, when it's a uh, high stakes fight and guys are talking about, you know, uh, hurting the other guy, it's been so ridiculous. You've had members of Haney's corner and shame on them talking about if he dies, then he dies, right? Lying straight out of Rocky IV. I mean, literally, right? If guys are going to fight with that level of ferocity, then this plus 119 on the fight not going the distance is a gift. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. I hope you leave them in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.